It's a very large exercise, uh, which has two main objectives. First, train our maritime forces, but at the same time, validate the competency, the skills of the Turkish maritime headquarters. Uh, it takes into account uh, a lot of command and control concerns, uh, but as well, it involves a lot of forces for many, many NATO nations. Uh, the whole point when it comes to the evaluation itself uh, is to check if the Turkish Maritime Forces Headquarter is able to work in NATO environment, if he's NATO compliant or not. Uh, when this headquarter will be validated, uh, they will be in charge of the NRS-23 and will command at sea for a whole year. Uh, this NATO response force uh, consists of four main groups plus additional forces if necessary uh, two groups made of um, frigates and destroyers and two groups uh, made of mine hunters two of them are normally stationed in the north and are covering uh, the, the baltic sea and the channel and uh, two groups are based in the south uh, covering basically the mediterranean sea yeah we're doing dynamic mariner which is the biggest uh, maritime exercise um, that happens every year and this time it's off the turkish coast with uh, com turkish marfil the first time the turks have created a, uh, a prospective hrfm the, the high readiness 
uh, command to go and deploy at short notice, which they'll be on call in 2023 to do. Uh, so this is a big deal for Turkey, and uh, with about 50 units, uh, this is a big deal for NATO Maritime. Uh, fantastic to see so many ships, submarines and aircraft all in the same place operating together. It's exactly what NATO should be doing. NATO continues to involve, uh, and, and that's one of the most exciting things. You know, 30 nations all working together to deliver high-end operations. I mean, it's a huge challenge um, to get, just get the basic interoperability, but also the thinking and the shared perspectives which come together to give that really rich view. And I think that's something that's just enduring uh, in NATO. Um, we're clearly focused on uh, the current situation in Ukraine, but, but also around the world uh, and uh, other terrorist incidents and other things like that. Um, and so that does focus our minds. But actually, the fundamental point here is that we have ships, aircraft, submarines, and fundamentally people, and in this instance, a, uh, a headquarters ready uh, to provide choice through Sakia to our to the NAC uh, to do whatever the NAC demands that we uh, we're achieving. So it's readiness and capability, and that's what we're proving here. Dutch Navy, having a substantial experience and presence throughout the Mediterranean Sea, has already been contributing to NATO operations and tasks such as standing naval forces and Operation Sea Guardian. Now, with the responsibility of leading the NATO response force in 2023, it's time to take it on a higher level while working together with other allied nations.